Join the driving party with the all-new Audi S7. Let's go. Of the big Audi family of the MLB platform, A6, A7, A8, the A7 is always the one that has the sportiest look, here also with the strong accentuations on top of those. The S7 then even sportier, more contrast, here for example in the lower bumper, also in the front grille. Those ones, by the way, the big sensors here for all the assistance systems of both sides. Therefore, you can still get 3D Audi rings right there. 4 meters 96, 16 foot 3 or 195 inches is the length of the A7 or S7. So it's a little bit longer than the A6, S6, but just, just the overhang wheelbase is the same, the same platform. By the way, aluminum use at the doors and also at the hood for some weight savings. And this is how the S usually looks like here with those contrasting aluminum style look and also those bright window frames. I really like it that way, again, more elegant. In the rear perspective, I've activated now the turning indicators, or here in this case, the hazard lights, so you can see how it has this cascading form. Very interesting. And of course, the specialty of the A7 is this light strip that goes all around the vehicle. And now with a color variation for you here in Glacier White, we had normal A7 in white before. Here the S7, of course, and with a sportier look. But why does this one here even look a little bit sportier and more contrast-ish? Well, this one here has the black pack, unlike the car we showed you earlier with the gray one. This one here then with black frames and also black lower contrast. So you have both with the all around with the front grille, then the lower part, and also with the frames around the windows where you also have the black accentuations. In the US, 2.9 liter V6 now, also downsizing, 450 horsepower, four and a half seconds is the acceleration figure. And this one here for Europe, the three liter TDI V6 diesel, 350 horsepower, so less horsepower, but 100 newton meters of torque more, so 700 newton meters of torque, that's pretty massive. And about five seconds is the acceleration figure, to be very correct for the S7, 5.1 to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. Nice build quality here with the leather red and also with Alcantara on the inside. Great build quality also from all those buttons. Normal for S models, you get the normal sports seats, then with microfiber on the inside. But those ones are here already the S sports seats. And for the S7, they are indeed standard with the integrated head restraint. Just the surface would be different because standard you would have the microfiber on the inside, and that's also what you actually should stick to. Now getting inside, it's really interesting as for the ride height, a normal A7 is 10 millimeters lower than an A6 and for the S6 they put the S6 20 millimeters lower so now here they put the S7 10 millimeters lower so overall they are then the S models at the same ride height. But it's interior overview is so to say the cleanest in this very segment then with this quattro table here so to say very interesting with the brushed aluminum matte surface really nicely done soft touch at the top of the dashboard the steam media quite compact from the size right side here to control the volume left side to control something with the digital instruments 12.3 inch 
and those ones here, the new screen setup you have in those bigger Audis. Audi are really leading the virtual instruments, I think, because they are among the most clearest to read and this GPS view is also pretty fancy. And I like the function, you know, when you're driving then you can just uh, scroll in and out with a, a small jog at the steering wheel with your left thumb. And um, so it's really helpful for you coming to the next intersection and you, um, you know, can just finely tune it. That's really cool. Of course, other views are available if you want the speed a little bit bigger. And now to this screen unit on the top part, you see the satellite view here. Uh, it runs out after a while and then you have to uh, pay for it. They have different models how to pay for the satellite view. You can also live without the satellite view, but for the normal one, it's also okay. Here, Frankfurt Airport from above, by the way. Pretty fancy to look at that. You can um, pick your address, by the way, in different ways. This is, by the way, how you can go back and go to the address is, for example, like here. Then in the lower part, you can either write with those, you know, like tip, or you can use this writing function and then write, you know, like Berlin. You can either use single letters or the tip from you. You can write the, the word and then you have Berlin. And it's also possible to use the voice command. It's also possible then. Fahre mich nach Berlin Hauptbahnhof. Just had it said on German here, so I was giving the. There it is. So this is the Berlin Central Station. You can see this worked pretty well. And now towards the rear. Legroom is not different than any other A6 um, or you know, sedan or Avant or whatever. See here, there's enough leg room left. But then about the headroom. When I'm in this normal S spine position, it's okay. And I don't, you know, put my spine all the way up. I can sit here with one with 86 or six with one. Just if I really put my spine all the way up, then I would hit the ceiling right there. So it's overall still okay. Oh, and not to forget, auto fuel, the channel of details. Here, soft touch at the inside of the doors for the rear doors. So they shouldn't forget it, and they didn't. The A7, same cons also for the S7, is rather something between an estate and the sedan. And that really counts for the practicability, because you can easily access it here with a fastback opening. This one here is just another cover. You can also remove that here. So the estate trunk length, the normal one, is 1 meters 15. And here it is. Well, actually the same. So the length from normal setup is the same as with the Avant. Welcome <laughs> to this driving part of the Audi S7. You might remember still our a7 review was really fantastic with also landscape from South Africa. Tune into that one later on if you're interested. Today the sportier version and everything we say will of course count both for the petrol and the diesel version that are depending av available on the market. Um, here again in Europe with the diesel that is you know showing some really great performance. Just show you that here once more. 50 kilometers to 100. Well, and that's already it. Wow. So, really massive acceleration. You might pick up that there was a downshift needed before, even here when I'm here in this dynamic mode and the S shifting mode. Mm. So that was not like not necessarily about like any turbo lag or no turbo lag because here with the turbos and the compressor both you can basically have no turbo lag at all. It's more about the shifting process. So if you don't want to have that, use the shifting pedals right here, shift down, for example when here and in second gear, and then you can see there's immediate response. So that's more about the shifting. And even in this dynamic or S shifting mode. It doesn't put it in super low gears. So now we're getting to some very nice corners. Wow. Look at how this car is performing, how light it is driving, although it is somewhat heavy vehicle. That's really very well done. And indeed, I don't need an RS version of that. You know, I, I have been driving those vehicles too. They are a little bit stiffer from suspension, but then also tend to be a little bit rougher. So this S 
what you have feel like in an S7, S6 and so on, they can master a better compromise between sportiness and comfort, whereas the RS models are really with less compromise. Of course, someone might want that, but then you again pay even more money. And yeah, driving fun-wise and performance-wise, this three liter, no, I don't want any traffic info. So this three liter TDI is totally fine. Again, the fun from hearing the sound, that might be different. Recently, you've probably seen our Tesla Model 3 review that you can even have a lot of driving fun even if you have no sound at all. But of course, I think it's you know somehow in us when we are like car enthusiasts that we can't say no to like a growling V8 or something, something we have to get used to. But they're gonna say you can solve that somehow with sound actuators. So I'm waiting for the electric manufacturers to bring like a V8 mode into, into their vehicles. You can just turn on. The sound actuators that are being used, that's you know a step towards it definitely. And if you think about that, even Lexus in a naturally aspirated V8 uses sound actuators nowadays because they are so well insulated you would not really hear it. So that's also a thing here. The cabin is so well insulated I don't have to raise my voice at all. It's super smooth. So we also want to take the S7 to the motorway. We start with a little assistant system because when I activate it here at the next column next to the steering wheel, it's the adaptive cruise control and the upper one above deactivates or activates if you have the highest trim of the assistant systems, the adaptive driving assistant and this one then is also taking care of keeping you in the lane. Again, system not meant to be that you take your hands off the steering wheel but just to demonstration purposes here keeps me in the lane and in a quite smooth process so it's not like it's now already telling me please overtake but again it's keeping it in a in a nice way own not that it's like overreacting or something and now to our conclusion for today with the Audi S7 in this new generation to me probably the most beautiful one in this very segment what do you think about it? Yeah, you know, it has a very angular design and it's quite, quite with those, you know, sharp lines, but I really like it, especially here with the chrome or aluminum style contrast, if you don't have this dark package and the overall form, of course, with this fastback. Then the interior is also with a great build quality. Some more materials to animal skin are lacking, yes, but other than that, it's really well done. Well, maybe this one part at the middle console that giving some rattling noise. I think they should fix that. But all other than that, every single button is really from very good quality. To use the infotainment system is somewhat intuitive with the screen and so on. But while driving, you know, here and there, it could also be a little bit easier. That's always, you know, the pro and con of how that works. You still have decent amount of space here. The Avant, the estate, would of course be more practical. Yet again, this one here is a good compromise between the sedan and the Avant because you still have a good fastback opening right there in the trunk, can easily access the luggage area. It's of course a little bit limited in height, but still, you got the great sporty styling and somehow it felt a little bit sportier even than the S6. And I'm not really that sure if it's really something or it's just felt because of the design. But somehow I always have a little bit more fun here in the 7 than in the 6. But of course both are coming very, very close. Great performance with this diesel and you can also, if you want, score some decent consumption figures. Not of course if you floor it all the way out. But even then, the consumption difference for the diesel is really lower than the consumption difference from minimum to maximum for the petrol engine. So as for less fuel consumption, it really makes sense. And of course, just using the fuel station less often if you think about a higher range, for example. The petrol then will be a little bit more emotional, especially for our friends in the US who can still get it, especially sound-wise. What's your take here on the A7, the S7? And please also tune in to the S6 Avant review. We also have that one for you. So, next time, how to go fuel again? 
you and me together, please join us. <laughs>